kitchen and I ain't kidding although nothing is written you are a ticket Tune the Symphony. It's Half Glass Gaming. Welcome back, everybody. My name is Julian. I'm joined, as always, and until the end of time, by Josh. Yep. Reverend. Uh, I have been bound to Julian by the soul via magic. Yeah. Stick the snakes, baby. <laughs> and Mandy. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I gotta tell you, though, I am not liking what I'm seeing. Mandy, you look cranky. I am kind of cranky. I've been playing uh, Parappa 2 on the PS4. Mm -hmm. It's a fun game, and I like it a lot, but some of those songs, man, they get in your head, and it's just like one line of the song gets in my head, and I hear it over and over. Mm -hmm. So for like the past few days, it's just been pull the lever or whatever. Right now! <laughs> right now! Oh! Over and over, and I, I can't take it anymore. You need to play some non-Parappa video games. Hmm. Yeah, the first Parappa game had a stage where Parappa had to use the bathroom, and he, in order to get into the bathroom, he had to rap battle with all of the people in line. He, every time he beat someone in a rap battle, he would get to move ahead of them in line. Well, you know, when you've got a game all about rap battling, suddenly everything becomes a reason to rap battle. There's like a lizard and like a chicken, and the chicken's all like, I am the chicken from the kitchen. My feathers are smooth and my <laughs> rhymes are bitchin'. Yeah. <laughs> something like that. One of the um, songs from the original Parappa um, was sampled and turned into a song by the rapper Bus Driver called Befriend the Friendless Friendster. <laughs> <laughs> what a great name. I think it was the, the driving level. Anyways, uh, no, I despise when I get bad, corny, strange music stuck in my head. I know what I mean. Like, now that Christmas is long over, like, I should be free of those terrible little earworms, but I brought it back on myself because I forgot how obnoxious some of those songs can be. It's been fun, though, and I, I get trophies now mm -hmm. for completing songs in Parappa. And well, that's one of the reasons to rebuy games these days. No, I mean, I know not everybody is thrilled with it, but to me, I think I paid 7 bucks for Parappa 2. $7 for trophy support. That alone is worth it to me. <laughs> that is how much joy I get out of trophies. Yeah. I like it when games have trophies, and I'll, you know, do some stuff to try to get trophies, but... Like, having trophies isn't a draw to me. I, I'm not going to buy a game because mm -hmm. it has trophies. And I'm certainly not going to rebuy a game because now it has trophies. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't even own Parappa 2 anymore. I was actually really bad about selling well, games do. to game stuff. You do now. Yeah, I do. But well, before this, I was really bad at, during that era, the PS1 and the PS2 era, about selling old games to game stuff. Oh, yeah. And now my PS2 collection is pitiful. Mm -hmm. well, like, I have the games. I, play, I put 200 hours in. Like, I still have... Disgaea, a lot of you sell tactics mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And I have my favorite games of all time, like Stanley Hill 2 and 3. But stuff like Parappa 2, it, I got like five bucks credit for it. Probably yeah. used it to buy some crappy PS2 game. Yeah. But I traded back to GameStop again. So mm -hmm. Up Jammer Lammy. Um, uh, um, Jammer um, Lammy. Jammer. Um, Jammer Lammy is like the super hard version of Parappa. Yeah. And there's a death by banana peel. And <laughs> rapping and, well, not rapping, jamming your way out of hell mm. after you die yeah. from a banana peel. That's it's dark. a good game. That's hilarious. That's a deadly descent. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <ugh>. <laughs> Well, before we get too far into the conversation and get stuck in your head, I think I'm going to call for a quick break. Um, I'd like to thank 2XAA for popping wheelies. Uh, I'm joking. Uh, Retrovolve.com, HalfGlassGaming.com. Of course, uh, we're also on iTunes. We are on Stitcher. Um, so when we get back from our break, we're going to be talking about uh, remasters, remakes, redos, reduxes, reductions, and that's it. Back from the break. Got a question for you. Remakes, remasters, they seem incredibly prevalent. Is this a new 
phenomenon? Or perhaps is this a relic of the past? Remasters and remakes are almost as old as video games. I tried to find the first one, and I'm not actually sure this is even the first one because there's just not a lot of data about video games this old. But the earliest one I could find is uh, Gunfight, which was released in 1975, is a remake of a game that came out in 1973 called Western Gun. Hmm. By the time they were able to bring it over to America, you know, there'd already been graphical leaps, so they remade it with a, a better processor, better engine, and prettier graphics, mm -hmm. and gave it a shiny new name and released it like it was a brand new game. I mean, a lot of the times um, back in the day, you know, console ports, I guess you could consider um, remakes. I mean, some of them are absolutely like, don't, have you ever played Double Dragon Arcade? I can't say that I have. The, the main villain of Double Dragon on the NES is one of the two playable characters in the arcade version, and he's a good guy. It's a completely different story, completely different graphics. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like the name of one of the main characters is the same, and they're both beat-em-ups, but they're like almost entirely different games. Hmm. I don't know. I don't have an abide, deep abiding love for um, remasters. Remakes are, are kind of their own thing, but mm -hmm. remasters... Um, the way the industry is using them these days. I would probably mind it less if it wasn't that it felt like so often they're trying to release it as, you know, a full price new release. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was true in the past too, though. Actually, the first time I played the first King's Quest was not even maybe just a couple years after its release. And I found this out. Only recently. It was a remake. Was it a remake or a remaster? It was a, it was a remake. It was just the same game with prettier graphics. And well, all new graphics. And so they had redone it mm -hmm. with just new graphics. And so they wanted it to be on par with the other games in the King's Quest series. Mm -hmm. And it was, it, it looked the same. And I had no idea until maybe a couple months ago. And that game was remade again uh, in 2001. And that I knew about, but I had no idea that that mm -hmm. was the second remake of King's Quest 1. I mean, that was incredibly common. It's that it happened all the time. It's that people weren't super aware <laughs> mm -hmm. of that and people didn't have the kind of knowledge they have now mm -hmm. thanks to the internet i didn't own a super nes until you know like a month ago yeah. and the only way i've been able to play some of the older final fantasy games is because they re-released them mm -hmm. on the ps1 in in the late 90s and you know i was able to play final fantasy 4 and final fantasy 5 which had you know 5 had never even come to the united states before that i, I think the value of making a remake outweighs the the cons. Mm -hmm. I mean, the only cons is like, oh, I, I already own this game. And it's like, well, if you already own the game, just don't buy the remake. Well, so let me let me just get some clarification here because my <clears throat> understanding was that a remaster is just the same thing with new graphics, and a remake is when they like change some stuff up as they're making it. I would consider a remaster just like upscaled graphics. So if you took the graphics and made them, made them HD, but they were the same graphics, that would be a remaster. And if they redid the graphics from scratch, that would be a remake. Mm -hmm. Okay. When they do remasters, they tend to add at least a couple new features. And not, not all games do, but like... Mm -hmm. You know, all of the PS2 games that are coming to PS4 right now are they're upscaling the graphics and adding trophy support, and trophy support is a new feature. Uh, the Last of Us Remastered had like the photo mode that wasn't in the original game, and yeah, I think I would just look at the terms that we're using. A remaster is sort of taking something that already exists and remastering the polish, the finish, adding things perhaps, but keeping the base core item there. And a remake is literally from scratch. You know, it might even be the exact same game beat by beat, but it's actually being remade, um, recreated, I guess you could say. Yeah. Fabricated. Personally, like, and I, I've mentioned this in the podcast before, but I skipped a majority of the PS2 era, mm -hmm. and I've only been able to, to go back and replay a lot of that stuff because... They made so many HD remasters of those games. You know, that's how I ended up getting to play the Metal Gear games, which are some of my favorite games of all time now. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how I got to play Shadow of the Classes and Ico and games like that. Really? Like, to me, if you're going to, to grab a game and remake it or remaster it or whatever, 
uh, it should be a game that is not as easy to get a hold of anymore. And I think that's probably when th- the best use of these things. See, I think... the la- I mean, The Last of Us, there was, what, a year well, between... The, the yeah, The Last of Us was 2013 and Remastered was 2014. But mm-hmm. see, I, I complained about The Last of Us when that happened. In recent times, though, some of these games um, are, are literally just ways for development teams to figure out how to work with new hardware that has right. come out. They pour it over The Last of Us to try to figure out how to make the next Uncharted, let's say. Right. But because I think it was such a success um, and, and there were perhaps such large numbers of people like me who were going from the Xbox 360 to now the PlayStation 4 because it seemed like the gaming right. rig that I preferred, it gave me and, and you know probably millions of others the opportunity to then start playing these games again. Right. And I was just thinking, too, of the Uncharted collection, which is actually being bundled with mm-hmm. PS4s, that people can play those games that they might have missed if they only had a 360, and then mm-hmm. they can buy Uncharted 4 for the PS4 and be all cut up. And they get three games for the price of one, which mm-hmm. is a pretty awesome deal. Right. And, yeah. you know, Naughty Dog, when they released the Uncharted collection, they estimated that 80 percent of ps4 owners had never played an uncharted game Mm -hmm. and so it was you know this massive migration from xbox to to playstation Mm -hmm. and the uncharted games were ps3 exclusives playstation 4 owners aren't going to be able to catch up on the uncharted series before uncharted 4 unless you know it gets ported over to the ps4 Mm -hmm. and so it was a very smart thing and you know it's not like those games are that old uncharted 3 it came out i believe 20 2011 actually Mm -hmm. how much do you feel has to be added before it's worth full price like you know they bundled three games together or when they re-released uh, Final Fantasy 4 and 5. It was two games in one. 4 and Chrono Trigger. It, right, 4 and Chrono Trigger, and Anthology was 5 and 6. Mm-hmm. Uh, Which is, you know, that's that's the only way I was able to play Chrono Trigger. Right, and, and that's like, you know, so well, like, what... What do you feel needs to be added before, okay, yes, this is a full price game, worth that? Well, I mean, and uh, the, the PlayStation 2 games that people are complaining about right now are selling for 10 to $15 and are regularly on sale. You know, Mandy and I both got Parappa for like $7. Even if you had a disc of Parappa, it would be worth $7 to play it again on a modern system with slightly upscaled graphics mm-hmm. and trophy support. Yeah, I think, and with like the Uncharted collection, you know, first off, they look better. Um, but you could practically get that game for free if you bought the bundle, you know, PS4 that was discounted for this holiday season. Uh, the uh, Metro series, together you can get them bundled, I believe, for 40 or 50 I bought that for Josh back when he graduated from college, and I think I paid 30 mm-hmm. for the two. Two of them? I think it retailed for 50 originally. Okay. So okay. I got it on if, sale. If I'm remembering correctly. Yeah. But, uh... And I, I think three games, three full-fledged games on one disc for retail price is a pretty goddamn yeah. good I mean, Sure. There yeah. are instances where I have played paid full price for a mm-hmm. single game, um, like the Skies of Arcadia version, which was closer to a port than a remaster mm-hmm. for the GameCube, but Skies of Arcadia was originally released on the Dreamcast and then re-released with a small amount of extra content and slightly improved graphics on the GameCube. And Skies of Arcadia is a super rare game. Mm-hmm. You know, the Dreamcast had a super short lifespan. Yeah. And so it just made more sense. And it was worth full price. It's a fantastic game. One of the best RPGs I've ever played. You know, if I had already had it on the Dreamcast and beaten it, I probably wouldn't have paid full price for it on mm-hmm. another console, but I had no problem, as it is. Uh, the same is true for Lunar Silver Star Story. Lunar was originally released as uh, Lunar the Silver Star on the Sega CD, mm-hmm. then remade for the Saturn as Lunar uh, Silver Star Story, and I never had a chance to play either of those. I didn't own a Sega system until the Dreamcast. That's because nobody owned Sega CD or Sega Saturn. I owned a Sega CD. Or yeah, but you don't exist. <laughs> so I had no problem paying a full price for it on the PS1. That mm-hmm. was a working designs release too, so it came with all sorts of extra goodies. Like it was a fantastic value for the money. And mm-hmm. if you already owned it for this uh Sega Saturn, yeah, you probably wouldn't buy it for the PS1, but that's not who it was made for. Right. It's not always trying to resell games to the same people. It's about selling games to somebody who never played the uh, original version. Yeah, I think there are definitely categories for remasters, remakes, um, some of which are the ability for a game that didn't quite perhaps get a fair shake the first time to come back and perhaps receive appreciation. 
which happens quite often. Um, there's the game that basically is just maybe perhaps a capitalize on nostalgia, just to kind of nickel and dime you a little bit. There have been a couple of ports, I'd say, um, for like Final Fantasy games that um, I think have fallen into that category. There's, there seem to be a, 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 a waning um, number of remakes or remasters, I guess you could say, in the 90s, um, which perhaps is sort I think of... it's linked to arcades because mm-hmm. so many, I imagine at least, I don't have specific numbers. I was reading a book about video games and they mentioned that there was a slight decline, but uh, arcades had declined by that point, so arcade mm-hmm. games weren't getting remade for consoles anymore. Mm-hmm. That was probably before the big surge of nostalgia-fueled remakes, which I think was probably started by the Final Fantasy remakes and ports in the late 90s but uh i mean there have always been ridiculous situations with remakes and remasters Mm -hmm. like if you look at the first castlevania i mean castlevania 4 is straight up a remake of castlevania 1 and they released it as a new game in the series and nobody cared it's amazing so i feel like in the case of that specific situation the changes were so vast that it wasn't the same game I mean, just taking Castlevania and allowing you to whip in eight directions instead of just, you know, left or right, that changed the game tremendously. Mm -hmm. Now there was a lot more stuff they could do, and they did it. So, like, it it was a straight-up remake, but it almost wasn't because of the changes that they made. Well, no, that's 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 what a remake is. It's just the reception of remakes people had back then versus now. I mean, can you imagine if Final Fantasy XV was released as Final Fantasy XV and really it was a remake of Final Fantasy IX? <laughs> that's I mean, true. people would burn Square Edicts to the ground. You mm-hmm. just can't get away with doing that. Even if you change it dramatically, people are much harsher, and I think it's just because they have way more information mm-hmm. and aren't relying on whatever is printed in their video game magazines. That may be true. Well, and I think recently, you know, the PS3 and the Xbox 360 had such long lives, and there didn't appear to initially be much um, incentive to necessarily jump to the PS4 and the Xbox One initially for a large number of video game players, other than the people who just had to have it, kind of a crowd, you know, um, especially since a lot of the launch titles were you know, not necessarily great, which, you know, is sometimes how it is. And there just wasn't a large number of exciting titles coming out. So all of a sudden there were these remasters that were kind of filling in this gap. And it just seemed like we were hit with like this fatigue that was setting in from seeing like games that we've already played kind of come back out, which gave you even less incentive. Yeah, I I didn't have a PS4 at launch, Mm -hmm. and I think I probably would have been really frustrated. I bought a PS4 a year after it launched Mm -hmm. in my first... The games that came with it were GTA V, which I already owned, and The Last of Us Remastered, which yep. I already owned. Mm-hmm. And uh, the first game I bought was Don't Starve, which I already owned. <laughs> yeah. Well, for me, I mean, it was I didn't really like uh, The Last of Us when I had played it originally, but since it was the only game that I had on the PS4, and I gave it another shot, and it ended up really sinking its teeth into me which i think was a good point to add to my gaming career (laughs) i mean they did make a bunch of changes to the Mm -hmm. ps4 version of gta 5 with the uh the first person mode Mm -hmm. i mean some people say it changes the entire feel of the game Mm -hmm. and i just personally don't like it very much but well it's funny the the development team uh for far cry when they saw that announced they said well we're done (laughs) I feel like a lot of the hatred towards the the remakes and remasters, uh, especially cross-system, is with those changes, because now people are feeling like, oh, well, you know, that system got all this stuff. Why don't I get it? Just because, you know, I went with the Xbox instead of the PlayStation or vice versa. Uh, But I do note that, like, back in the day with, like, the Sega Genesis and the Super Nintendo, that kind of stuff was even more marked. Because, like, you know, Aladdin for the Super Nintendo was a completely different game than Aladdin for the Sega Genesis. Mm -hmm. Or Pirates of Dark Waters, which is a game and a cartoon series that only, like, five people know about. Uh, You know, on the Super NES, it was uh, a 
Final Fight clone, and it was an odd platforming collectible stage thing on the Sega Genesis. Earthworm Jim on uh, Sega Genesis had an extra stage that wasn't in the Super Nintendo version. Hmm. Yeah, so like I, I do feel like some of the hatred like of the cross system remakes and remasters uh, does come from the increased knowledge, but like in that direction specifically. Mm-hmm. Like why why aren't I getting that? But you know that's that's been true. Probably forever, but certainly since the Super Nintendo Sega Genesis days. Well, yeah, as long as console wars have been a thing, the, you know, which version has the most content has been an issue. Yeah, I mean, even today, you know, when a game comes out, what system does it look better on, you know? uh, Do you remember Grassgate? I don't. There is uh, an issue. (laughs) Grassgate? That's what it was called! Uh, People found out that there was less grass in the Xbox One version of GTA V than the PS4 version of GTA 5 mm-hmm. and they were furious mm-hmm. and like just like posting comparison images everywhere and like showing like Xbox ones and, it, <laughs> and I mean it's just like slightly patchier grass but you know mm-hmm. how people get with console wars and so mm-hmm. this is like the crime of the century that Microsoft was stealing their grass <laughs> 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 well, interesting with GTA Five is it was released, it was great, and then it was re-released on um, next gen, and it was that much better. But then the ultimate version came out on the PC. It's like this game's ever evolving, ever getting better. You know, it's like come <laughs> well, on. And that I think also uh, manages to feed into some of the hatred because you know, like they see this game that they just bought three years ago and now it's being released with more content well why the fuck couldn't you put that content in originally Mm -hmm. which you know realistically if they could have they probably would have they weren't like realistically they weren't holding back content going oh we're just gonna put this in the Mm re-release but it feels that way sometimes Mm -hmm. they can use that money to fund a bully sequel (laughs) but they're obviously um terrible examples i would say of remakes or oh remasters. absolutely um, two of my favorite games of all time have both received just garbage shockingly bad remasters mm-hmm. one is silent hill 2 which was remade in the silent hill hd collection mm-hmm. alongside silent hill 3 and i mean it's stunning that it could have even been released they actually like thought it would be a feature to take out fog from the game which if you've ever played silent hill yeah. fog is a core part of the experience anyways but the thing is in the games like they sort of used fog to mask the stuff yep. that they had in completely filled in areas so there are just non-designed areas now in the game in, <laughs> in upscaled hd so you can see like you can see even better that it's a piece yeah of shit. or like <laughs> in, in the ios and now steam uh remake of final fantasy 6 uh you know they they would just use tiles mm-hmm to fill in a lot of the textures Mm -hmm. and you couldn't see the lines between the tiles because you know they were pixelated so they fixed that they took out the pixels and cleaned it up and they didn't get rid of the lines between the tiles so you could see little white lines in between the tiles when you look at the Ah, game like this idea of cleaning things up without actually trying to make an attractive game. And the thing is, like, there are a lot of very good Final Fantasy remakes. Even for iOS, the remake of the first Final Fantasy looks beautiful. Mm. They redid all the sprites. They redid the backgrounds. And if you prefer the original, like, I get it. I I like pixel art too. But, Mm -hmm. you know, it looked good. They put effort into making a good-looking product. And that's the thing. It's like, it's not even that it's not for everybody or that I like the original more. It's that they didn't put any effort into it. Yeah. What's funny is um, when they were redoing State of Decay to go from the 360 to the Xbox One, they had discovered that some of the uh, original development team had put dicks. (laughs) (laughs) Just pictures of penises throughout the background that you just wouldn't see because the resolution wasn't that crazy. Well, what a feature. Yeah. Penis gate. (laughs) Penis gate. (laughs) (laughs) They weren't dicking around. (laughs) Sounds like they were dicking around. (laughs) (laughs) So I think ultimately, though, um, and I think Reverend's already touched on this, there's this perceived negative quality to remakes in that if you've already owned and played the game, ultimately you're just paying for the same content, even if it does look better or has more features. Basically, at the end of the day, you know, you're buying the same game twice. It's so weird to me. 
that people are so upset about the PS2 thing. And I get that people are upset because PS2 discs don't work in the PS4 Mm -hmm. and people feel like a lack of backward compatibility is a huge issue. Yeah. It's, it's just been something that's been around. But I mean, name one console that was backward compatible more than one generation. I can only think of one, and it's the PS3, which mm-hmm. was compatible with PS1 discs. And also, let's be honest, until the PlayStation 2 came around, backwards compatibility wasn't a thing. Atari, uh, uh, Atari okay, 7600 Atari. was backwards compatible. Okay, Nobody Atari. cared because no. it was the Atari yeah, right. 7600, but, but it so was backwards compatible. Other than the system that no one cared about. <laughs> I think you mean the 7800? Oh, no. (laughs) Yeah, you're right. I'm just so excited about this that I'm inventing brand new consoles. But no, you're right. It was the Atari 7800 that was backwards compatible. But like, you know, in in more modern gaming since since after the video game crash, you know, since Nintendo, backwards compatibility wasn't a thing. Mm -hmm. Sony came out and like, here's this thing. And it was great. And I'm glad it exists. But now everybody's acting like that's mandatory. It has to be there. Well... Or you could save your fucking PS2. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, backwards compatibility makes consoles more expensive. So it's sort of, do you want to pay more for a Mm -hmm. console or do you want a cheaper console and no backwards compatibility? Mm -hmm. And I personally would take the cheaper console and no backwards compatibility, but I know there are other people who would disagree. And it might just be too expensive to make two different models and offer people the choice. A lot of people, and I understand it, even though it's not my thing, but a lot of people are really dead set on having physical media. And I feel like a lot of uh, game developers and, and you know, console makers and such are trying to move away from that as much as possible. Reasonably so, because, you know, when you have to press discs, that's an extra cost. Mm-hmm. When you can digitally distribute, it's it's much cheaper. And I understand, I understand all the bullshit in that, you know, trying to charge the exact same amount for digital, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Fine. But the fact that people are like, no, I have to have a disc is also part of why, no, I have to have backwards compatibility because I have all these discs and what am I going to do with them if I can't play them in my new system? Perhaps initially backwards compatibility was basically just a way to help ease the burden. You know, hey, look, you can still play some of these old games you already have while you're waiting to, you know, buy new ones or whatever. But, you know, you couldn't play Nintendo games on the Super Nintendo. I was always the guy that once the new thing came out, I got rid of everything before me like an idiot and... (laughs) You know, got the new thing. and In the PS2 era, like, there was a lot greater of a need for backward compatibility because there wasn't digital games. Mm-hmm. And right. I think a lot of console manufacturers are like, well, it's way cheaper just to include that as, you know, a part of our store instead of building two consoles into one system. Mm-hmm. No, and that was the case with the original fat PS3. They actually basically had a PS2 inside the PS3, and that's why it was huge and mm. also super expensive. Yeah, it was like, what, 600 it, bucks? Yeah, yeah, because the PS2's emotion engine, they couldn't figure out a way to emulate that in the PS3 architecture. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so they, it was two consoles in one. Mm-hmm. The PS3 actually launched with uh, two different price tiers. There was the $600 model, but there was also a $500 model that had less storage space. Uh, then a year later, Sony announced that they were releasing, you know, yet another model that had already had the PS2 backward compatibility removed. Yeah, I mean, I personally would much prefer to play um, some PS3 games that I missed out on on my PS4 as opposed to PS2. I mean, I'm fond of games from that era, but I really could get Yeah, no, that's what I always hope for. I'm like, oh, I just, like, if Valkyria Chronicles is one of my favorite games on the PS3, but it was mm-hmm. an early PS3 release and it never got trophy support and so now that they're remastering it for the ps4 i will absolutely pay for the same game twice Mm -hmm. one because it is a fantastic game and two because oh it'll be so good (laughs) to play that game with trophies i'm so good at at, at beating those maps quickly and i never got trophies for it and mm -hmm. it always bummed me out well, and I mean, just looking at some of the games that are available, it's like GTA 3 and, and Vice City and San Andreas. I got GTA 5. I mean, it's not really a series that I think holds up the further back you go. Uh, I could be wrong. Maybe there are people who prefer the old ones, but it kind of seems like, you know, it's far enough in the past and I've enjoyed those that there's just nothing there for me to go back to. I remember having a lot of fun with GTA 3, certainly way back when. But yeah, I played it uh, more recently and it's like, eh. 
I think there are definitely examples of games that they did it, whatever they did, that hasn't been done since or done as well. Especially probably in like the RPG genre, some of the old gems. The Metal Gear games, for sure. Shadow of the Colossus. I, right, know, um, yep. However dated the graphics may look or however pretty they try to make them, the core gameplay is still very solid and hasn't been replicated um, yeah. or improved upon and, you know, delivered. Or there's uh, Square Enix with their trying to reinvent the wheel with the Final Fantasy gameplay. Mm-hmm. Or Squeenix. You know, Squeenix, and as, as, the cool, as the cool kids are saying these yeah, days. Yeah, cool kids. <laughs> I like Crisis Core. I don't want anyone to say that, that I'm saying that wasn't a good game. It was a great game. Mm-hmm. But uh, I hear tell that they're making the uh, combat system in the Final Fantasy VII remake uh, more like Crisis Core. Mm-hmm. And... No, that's not even true. No, I mean, I wouldn't compare it to Crisis Core. It doesn't have the slot machine mechanic, and Crisis Core is kind of a mix of action RPG and turn-based mechanics to begin with. It isn't really an action game like the Final Fantasy VII Remake is. Yeah, I would say it's way more comparable to something like Final Fantasy XV, which... Which we've played a bit of because of the um, demo. And Tetsuya Nomura, uh, who's directing the Final Fantasy VII Remake, was also the original director of Final Fantasy XV. So that's probably why the combat seems so similar. I guess the main takeaway is that they're not going with turn-based combat anymore. They're using like an action type combat. Yeah, they're moving away from the old turn-based combat entirely and making it an action RPG. I didn't like the turn-based style of combat in mm-hmm. the old Final Fantasies. I didn't dislike it. It was just kind of there. I like I wasn't going to Final Fantasy for the combat. It's not a problem to me, and I don't understand why uh, Square Enix thinks it's really important to redesign the combat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like it's Final Fantasy VII. It's great. They just released a remastered Final Fantasy VII with the exact same combat as before, and so like if all you want is a slightly upscaled version of Final Fantasy seven it already exists with trophy support and with cool trophy extra support features. Does extra it, features does it look as beautiful as the screenshots we're seeing from the remake no yeah, of a, course it not it looks like the original game with prettier versions of those graphics because it's a remaster see because i would i would like those graphics that they're releasing in the remake but you know with the old gameplay yeah, see mean, that's not what I, that's not what i want a remake to be really actually to go to movies my favorite remake of all time is the 1970s version of invasion of the body snatchers mm. i saw the 50s version as a kid and at the time i didn't know the 70s version existed and the first thing i thought at the ending is like oh, i wish somebody would remake this mm. cuz it's such a good concept and it's so creepy but they play it so safe and it's such an obviously sanitized version and they never really take things to dark places Mm -hmm. and they have a really forced happy ending spoiler (laughs) for a movie from 1956 (laughs) but uh you've had a half a century to see it (laughs) (laughs) but so when i finally realized that did exist and i watched it like i was so happy that they didn't just do the same thing like they thought what's missing from this version or what could we do that's Mm -hmm. different and interesting in Mm -hmm. another way and so they do a really terrifying intense version that really plays with a lot of the psychological aspects Mm -hmm. of the premise of the movie which is you know pod people Mm -hmm. (laughs) i think the same could be said for um, the thing yeah the thing is like if they just taken it and remade it with better looking special effects and made it in color because you know the original has crappy effects in black and white like Mm -hmm. it would have been a terrible movie and i would have been much better off watching the original version Mm -hmm. so the whole reason that the 70s version is special is because it didn't try to just be the 50s version they tried to use the original story and do new and interesting things of it and so that's what i hope the final fantasy 7 remake does too a lesson that could have been learned from the new point break (laughs) that's what you hope you know remakes will accomplish Mm -hmm. not just sort of aping what came before it or even bungling it um but taking what was precious and, and unique and special about the original and finding a new way to express that or even, you know, update it. Yeah. Um, uh, there is a remake of, another remake of a uh, Lunar Silver Star story, which had redone graphics. And I mean, I like the way the original looks. Mm-hmm. So there's no point in making the same game mm-hmm. with better or graphics. Or there was uh, the, that same game, but they released it on the Game Boy Advanced. Yeah, that was uh, a demake, I would call right. it. Right, you know, it was a demake, but that allowed me to play the game 
at all. I think um, Capcom is finally figuring out what people want from the Silent Hill. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. What people want from uh, the Resident Evil franchise and are going back to the games that we've all sort of loved and yeah. are giving that sort of That's proper... fascinating because Resident Evil started out as a remake. Is that right, Of Of Sweet Home for the Famicom. Okay. It, it isn't a remake of Sweet mm-hmm. Home for the Famicom, but originally in development process, that's what it was. Mm-hmm. And then uh, they realized they had something special, so they pulled a Devil May Cry mm. and <laughs> made it an entirely different game. Well, although you can't say that Resident Evil is definitely guilty of a massive amount of remasters. Oh, and no, remakes. they are. <laughs> but, I mean, I think the GameCube yeah. version of Resident Evil is mm-hmm. far superior to the original. It, and then it Zero, and he, which is now uh, being remade. I actually have noticed that there's a lot of games, really good games, that started as remakes. And then, you know, they kind of did their own thing. Uh, you know, A Link Between Worlds started as a remake of A Link to the Past. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sure there are others that I'm just not thinking of, mm-hmm. but like there, there have been a lot of games that started off as remakes and they went, oh no, we have all these different ideas that by the time we implement them all, it's a completely different game. Yes. Which kind of brings you back to, to Super Castlevania or Castlevania 4, either way, which, but like you know, Manny said it. It is a remake of the first game. But if they had just had different stage backgrounds, mm-hmm. it literally would not have been a, a remake of the first game. Mm-hmm. And I mean, Castlevania is probably one of the most remade games of all time. Sure. There was a remake called Akamojo Dracula for the Sharp X sixty eight zero zero zero. However you say that, there, what there a terrible a, name! There, there was a couple of really bizarrely named computer consoles that only released in yeah. Japan. Mm. But uh, Akimoto Dracula was remade for the PS1 as Castlevania Chronicles. Mm. And so this just endless cycle of remakes. And there was Haunted Castle, which is the arcade remake of mm. Castlevania. And of course, Super <clears throat> Castlevania 4, Vampire Killer on the MSX. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could argue that Perfect Dark is sort of a remake slightly of 007, but done in a different way. A goal kind of right? right? Capitalizing on the Spiritual that, successor, yeah. I would call I it. I guess you could, yeah. And entertainingly, uh, one of the other Super Nintendo Castlevania, Dracula X, uh, is a demake of the original uh, Dracula Rondo of Blood, which came out in Japan. Hmm. They, like, took a lot of content out. Uh, and then they remade Rondo of Blood for the PSP. And in that game, you could also, like, find the ability to play Symphony of the Night and the original Dracula X and the original Rondo of Blood. I mean, all the games are are Castlevania remakes. That's what we're saying here. Right. Every every game that has ever been made is a Castlevania remake. Uh, Mm -hmm. Final Fantasy VII remake is a remake of Final Fantasy VII, which is just a really weird Castlevania remake. (laughs) Right. all Mm -hmm. it is. Every video game. Even the ones that came out before Castlevania. Right. They're all Castlevania. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it wasn't that good of a joke. <laughs> the, the full depth of how ridiculous that was just hit me. I, I feel <laughs> because feel like, an imposter syndrome here. The we just, we just both went, we just both went through laughing. that with such a straight face, and I'm like, wait a sec, what the fuck were we just saying? <laughs> Saying that all video games are Castlevania remakes, it's pretty simple. Yeah, I mean, all right, Josh, go ahead. It's interesting to look at because as much as people complain about remasters and you know remasters of games that aren't even that old, uh, I did an article a couple years ago about how the best reviewed game on Metacritic of 2013 was a re-release of a remake. Mm. It was the Metal Gear Solid Legacy Collection, which was the Metal Gear Solid HD Collection with they just added two more games to it. I've more recently come upon an article that I didn't write uh, that talks about how two of the highest rated games on Metacritic of 2014 were The Last of Us Remastered and GTA V Remastered. And it's, they're getting good reviews, you mm-hmm. know, reviewers like them. And they clearly make money, otherwise companies wouldn't keep making them. Right, and I, I guess I'm not entirely clear on what the issue is, because it's like, if you have a PS3 and you have a PS4, and they re-release GTA V for the PS4, and you already have it on PS3, like, just don't fucking buy it. This goes back to what I was saying with the perceived value of the extra content. Now, like, why didn't you give me that? I saw people just furious that The Last Guardian is coming to PS4 instead of PS3. 
It's like, I bought a PS3 10 years ago because I thought the last Guardian was going to come. It's <laughs> you're, like, you're, you're not going to be with your money, man. Yeah. Right. It's like, it's like you bought a PS3 for $600 when it was ridiculously overpriced for a game that was like barely even announced. Mm-hmm. Like, it doesn't even make sense. To be mm-hmm. fair, Icon of Shadows of the, Shadows of the Colossus. Shadow really of the Colossus. Colossus. There's only one shadow. <laughs> there's multiple Colossi, so no, there's multiple oh, shadows. There's only, there's only one shadow and only one Colossus in the title. Well, I agree. <laughs> and another thing with that, too, is if you've already purchased the original game and want to play the new content, you can wait. Mm-hmm. I mean, when Persona 4 Golden came out, I'd already purchased Persona 4 and played it through. And I wanted to play that new content, but I didn't even have a Vita at the mm-hmm. time it came out, so I waited, and I paid mm-hmm. $15 for, which is more than worth it for all that new story yeah, content sure, in but, the game. But Plus. again, it's it's less about oh well, you know, I can I don't want to buy it, and mm-hmm. more about why didn't I get that? Well, but the thing is, is why didn't I get that? I think that's the wrong approach. Because well, it absolutely is. But it's including it's, all of this extra content to say this is why it's worth. Right. It, it, now, to buy this game a second time. It, you're completely right, but, you know, lizard brains are going to do what lizard brains are going to do. And also, you know, Grand Theft, uh, uh, Rockstar did a pretty commendable job of supporting the 360 and the PS3 games with extra content for a while. Right. Um, it was only recently that they just said, you know, it's not feasible for us to basically keep doing this. The, the other reason I think people kind of uh, have a gut negative reaction to uh, remakes and remasters these days, certainly because they have more information, they just know they're coming, but there's this misunderstanding of how the industry works. So there's this idea, oh, well, if this company is working on a remake or a remaster, they're not working on a new game that I could be playing. You know, well, why are they working on that game when I already own that game? Mm-hmm. Well, and I think, you know, when Bethesda was talking about making Fallout 4 and they had mentioned that they had ported Skyrim over to, you know, the current gen hardware um, just to kind of get their feel for the systems to help them better make Fallout 4. And they were asked, well, when's the Skyrim remaster coming out? And they said, well, we don't have any plans for that. People were upset. They were like, I would, I personally would buy that shit again. I miss playing Skyrim because I, you know, played it on the console and I no longer have that console. Yeah. And I think this is what it comes down to, is that remasters continue to come out because... Perhaps it's a way for people to make money to help fund the next project. Um, perhaps it's a way for games that just didn't quite reach its level of um, awareness um, and appreciation even the first time it came out for whatever the reason. That's definitely a, a, another positive avenue. Sometimes it's just a way to fix what perhaps didn't go right the first time in a remake or even a remaster. Um, the Halo Collection, you know, was a way to celebrate the legacy of this game. Uh, much like I would say the uh, Nathan Drake collection perhaps was, but also then a way for you to get excited for what's to come. Um, but people are buying them. People are loving them. I've done it. Uh, I will probably continue to. So thank you for joining us. We'll be back next week with a remastered version of this episode um, with a few thes added here and there. I uh, appreciate you listening. Half Glass Gaming, we're punching you into colon. See you later. There's a dude with a motorcycle, and I think he's been driving it around. I don't know why you would when it's this cold out, but... I'm going to impress this lady. Mm-hmm. And then the ladies will keep you warm by mm-hmm. hugging you. Mm-hmm. He can't afford a jacket. It's the next <laughs> best thing. Right. He spent all his money on his motorcycle. <laughs> he can't afford a jacket, so he has to wear women. Yeah. <laughs> Just... <laughs> Peggy, get out. I'm going out. He's a Buffalo Bill of motorcycle drivers. (laughs) Oh, I'm proud of that one.